Now we're going to link sleep, which we all do, I believe, <laughs> with mitochondria, which we all have. Yay! Two of my favourite things. Indeed. So. so famously, mitochondria are... Former bacteria. The powerhouse the of power the cells. Oh, of cells. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> have you not caught this meme? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have not. It's a joke uh, that everybody knows that mitochondria are the powerhouse of they, the cell. They are. And yeah. not much more than that. Right. But, but what they really are are these specialist little organs, essentially, inside our cells that do chemical reactions to provide our cells with energy. And now a study suggests that mitochondria in the brain actually help to trigger sleep when you've been awake too long yeah. by building our sleep pressure. Yeah, it's, it's a fascinating story, this. Um, and to add, well, it's already brimming with interest, this story. But to add, I will say that I'm going to link this very feasibly to Ozzy Osbourne right. this week. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, but before we get to Ozzy, let's learn about more about the study. Uh, to do that, we welcome Alexandra Thompson back to the pod. Alex, look, the first thing we should say is this new study, it's on Drosophila, um, but there are applications or, you know, implications for humans as well, isn't there, aren't there? Yeah, so this is in fruit flies, which as a general rule, an animal study we take with a bit of a pinch of salt, mm. but particularly if it's not in mammals or preferably yeah. primates. But mitochondria are so fundamental to how cells work, we can quite confidently make the leap that this could also apply to people. OK, Alex, tell us more. So we have some understanding of how the brain reacts to sleep deprivation. I think emphasis on some because sleep is the biological enigma. <laughs> um, but we know that there are changes to neuronal firing, the structural shapes inside cells and how genes are expressed. We also know about specific neurons in the brain that switch on when sleep begins, but we're not so sure what tells those neurons to fire. Well, so you got, there are neurons that switch on when you go to sleep. I, I guess I always thought it was about winding down mm. and, you know, you forget. But I guess the, the brain is really active even when you're asleep, isn't it? It doesn't just turn off completely. No, the brain's very active during sleep. You yeah. obviously have much less vivid dreams <laughs> than me. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a time of, of memory consolidation, waste removal, processing information. Um, and there are several structures that are involved. So in people, there's the hypothalamus, which is sort of a peanut-sized structure deep inside the brain. That contains groups of neurons that act as control centres, affecting sleep and wakefulness, partly in response to light, and it sort of triggers a chain reaction that involves lots of different parts of the brain. Now, flies don't have a hypothalamus, but they do have a brain region called the, here we go, pars intercerebralis, mm -hmm. that performs similar function and houses their sleep neurons. So to better understand sort of the process of this, researchers use sequencing and fluorescent markers to study the genes expressed by sleep center neurons in about 1,000 female fruit flies, which usually get about 13 to 16 hours of sleep, mostly at night. That's a lot of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, so these, these young flies sleep yeah, more than a ch well, about the same as a baby. Well, yeah, right? you're happy if a baby sleeps for 12 You'd be, hours. Yeah, yeah, very happy. Very. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but babies, you know, they've got massive amounts massive of brains brain. they're pruning and they're, all these problems they're doing, you know, figuring out their brains. But a fly has just got this tiny little pinhead of a <laughs> bunch of neurons. And why do they need that much sleep? I just think it's exhausting being a nuisance. <laughs> <laughs> um, but they, it seems to be more about quiescence, sort of a period of dormancy rather than what we consider to be sleep. Mm. So there's some evidence they sleep more if they've had a busy day, <laughs> lots of social interactions. Also, flies that can't fly sleep longer, maybe because sleep helps them adapt to challenging situations. But anyway, back to the study. The team uh, let roughly half the flies get a full night's sleep. The others were kept awake for 12 hours, either by gently shaking the tubes they were in or by genetically engineering them so their wake-promoting neurons were switched on by a rise in temperature. And what they found was among the sleep-deprived flies, the sleep-inducing neurons ramped up the activity of genes involved in running and maintaining their mitochondria, the mitochondria also showed signs of being under stress, so they broke into smaller pieces, they cleared out damaged parts, and they formed contact points with nearby structures that help with repairs. So this stress may stem from the fact that the mitochondria keep producing energy, even when the neurons are sort of otherwise inactive. The researchers observed that this led to a buildup of electrons that leak out, generate free radicals, and ultimately trigger sleep pressure. Wow. I, this is fascinating because, OK, you, you know, you said the meme about them being, uh, we think of mitochondria just as these batteries or power packs of the cell. Mm. But I think that obscures the 
what incredible things they are. So, you know, across the membrane, they, they're pumping protons across the membrane multiple times, like thousands of times a second. Mm. And it generates acro- over a, like, just a few nanometers um, you know, enough, uh, basically about a bolt of lightning's worth of electricity. Um, and that power, the mitochondria harness that to make ATP, the, the universal cu- energy currency mm. of the cell. And that's just going on all the time. Um, so you can imagine with that much, uh, you know, electrical charge going on across a membrane, how uh, stressed and damaged they can get over their lifetimes. Yeah. And when the flies were finally allowed to sleep, the mitochondrial damage was repaired. The research has also found that flies with fragmented mitochondria in their sleep neurons slept less than normal and they didn't catch up on it after being kept awake. By contrast, flies whose mitochondria were engineered to fuse more readily, which suggests better repair mechanisms, they slept more than usual and showed a stronger rebound after that deprivation. So this all sort of supports the idea that mitochondria is involved in the pressure to sleep. We've not cracked the code of sleep. It's Mm. very complex, but it gives us a a clearer picture. So this is amazing, isn't it? Because it makes me think of we already knew that in people... Um, if you have mitochondria that aren't working very well, you're more likely to feel tired and fatigued. And that, that makes sense. You're producing less energy. But this idea is that the mitochondria in your sleep neurons are directly involved in the sensation of sleep pressure building, that feeling of sleep, sleepiness. And it, it just makes you think, well, what else are mitochondria at the core of? Yeah, well, this is it. They, they are at the core of lots of other mm. things. It's really, and, the, and when you stop to think about it, then... Why wouldn't they be? Because mm. they are at the core of what we are as eukaryotes, meaning, you know, mushrooms, trees, dolphins, us, any anything, any complex life form, we owe it to them. Yeah, because mitochondria, of course, were once free living bacteria. About two billion years ago, they were engulfed by another life form, a single celled archaea. And this led to the evolution of eukaryotes. That's all complex life, like you mentioned plants, fungi, animals. Yeah, yeah. so no, yes, exactly. No, Perhaps no surprise they have this kind of massive impact. Yeah, and, and just to add to the, the impressiveness, there's another part of the experiment where flies were engineered to have raised mitochondrial activity in response to light, and the team found that one hour of artificial light caused sleep duration to rise by as much as 25% compared with control flies. Um, so yeah, they investigated the brains of flies. They're not people, but as you say, mitochondria are in all complex things. And it also supports the idea that aerobic metabolism, which is the production of energy from nutrients and, and oxygen, which takes place in the mitochondria of, of most animals, that can drive sleep pressure. Mm. And, uh, you know, always looking for the news you can use. Does this tell us anything about how we can get more sleep, get better sleep? I don't know if it tells us how we can get better sleep right now. I think it hopefully just improving your understanding of anything Mm. leads to better treatments. And sleep conditions are really debilitating. They're also very common. So one particular person we spoke to said this provides us with novel opportunities to target these pathways and come up with new efficacious ways to treat people who have sleep problems. And also the team used various ways to keep the flies awake. So, you know, gene editing via temperature changes that were normal for the for the fly and and non-stressful for them. And they all had the same effects on mitochondria. So I think it's quite compelling evidence here. Um, Actually, another person said that what the study has revealed is the sleep homeostat is actually looking at its own mitochondria to estimate the need for sleep. So what's the link then to Ozzy Osbourne, who sadly died this week, age 76? Ozzy had Parkinson's disease. Mm. I think that was announced in 2020, announced it. Um, It obviously had it for a long time. Um, But he had a particular form of it that's linked to this gene called PRKN, Parkin. It produces a protein called Parkin. Mm. And that gene is involved in maintaining mitochondrial function. So there's not it's not a simple disease at all. And there's no simple link like there is in a few diseases between, Mm. you know, one broken gene and the disease. I mean, Parkinson's has got many complex features, but we know more than 200 mutations in this Parkin gene that have been linked to Parkinson's. So it does really seem like the mitochondria has a big role to play, uh, certainly in the form of it that Ozzy Osbourne had. Uh, it's so important that we continue to look into that because it's the fastest growing neurological condition in the world. Some wow. people are even talking about a Parkinson's pandemic. Wow. And a lot of the research I come across really focuses on the environmental potential causes, um, particularly pesticides. There was a study recently linking sort of how close you live to a golf course mm. to a high risk of Parkinson's because they've got their sprain on it. And that's all important to study, but we mustn't overlook the genetic element either. Mm. 